Okay, this is the fourth video in this playlist, What Do We Care About When We Care About Ethics? Previously, I've compared and contrasted the, the different ethical theories, how we might think about them as similar or different to each other. And in this video, I want to think about which groups of those are useful uh, that we should take with us in, in, in our investigation of ethics, and which are, uh, theories are a distraction or, or worse than a distraction. All right, so what we came up with was four families of moral theories. You could think about morality as a project of justice. That is to say, it's based on what's true about the other person that creates moral obligations for me, whether that's the capacity of others to suffer, whether that's other people being autonomous, whether that's the fact that people are equal to me. Uh, you can also think about morality as um, rooted in prudence, um, that I think about what's good for me uh, as I think about morality. Uh, morality can also be a matter of just approval or a matter of power. And I want to focus on those last two families here um, in this video. All right, so the approval family of morality. So uh, something's right or wrong because God approves or disapproves of it. That's the mind command theory. Cultural relativism, something is right or wrong because my culture approves or disapproves of it. Or ethical subjectivism, something is right or wrong because I approve or disapprove of it. What should we make of, of any of those theories? Um, first thing I'll say is that they're very popular. So I have lots and lots and lots of experience standing in rooms with people. Um, and the religious ones uh, often are gravitate naturally toward divine command theory. Say, oh yeah, uh, I'm a Christian, so I believe that murder is wrong because God said murder is wrong. Um, other people are... are maybe not religious, but really wanting to be respectful and noticing that different cultures have different ways to do things and say, oh, okay, I'm a cultural relativist uh, because everybody does things differently and I want to respect everybody. That's kind of where a lot of people are at. I think that's a very large <laughs> percentage of, of people's ethical thinking. So what should we make of it? Well, there's a very, very important question that needs to be asked of anyone who identifies with any of those three theories. The question is this. Is X wrong? And we're, X is some action. We're going to call, uh, let's say X is murder. Is murder wrong because Y? And Y is uh, either God, divine command theory, or my culture, or myself. Is X wrong because my culture disapproves? Uh, sorry, is murder wrong because my culture disapproves of murder? Or does my culture disapprove of murder because murder is wrong? Okay, sit with that for a second. Those two possibilities might seem like the same possibility, but they're very different. Let's start with the second half. Maybe my culture disapproves of murder because murder is wrong. Okay? If you say, I'm a cultural relativist, and, but, you, but you are okay with that statement, then you've made a logical mistake. You're actually not a cultural relativist. Because now the question becomes, okay, what makes murder wrong in the first place? It's not, that, it's not my culture approving or disapproving of it. It's something else. So that something else becomes a different moral theory, a theory that's unrelated, completely unrelated to cultural relativism. The same thing with divine command theory. If you think that God disapproves of murder because murder is wrong, you're not a divine command theorist. That's not divine command theory. Okay. Um, now we need a new theory to explain why murder is wrong in the first place, and the same thing with ethical subjectivism. Okay. So uh, a lot of people say, hey, I'm a cultural relativist, and then you say, then you ask them this question and they identify with the second possibility and the answer is, oh, you're not actually a cultural relativist. What if someone says, no, 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 I, I mean that murder is wrong specifically because my culture disapproves of murder. Okay, in that case, you really are a cultural relativist. But here's what I want to say. I want to say that thinking about ethics like that is frankly frightening. It's frightening. It's scary. <laughs> Think of all the most horrible things in the world. Think of terrorism. Think of genocide. Think of violence against women. Okay? All of these things have been, historically, have had moments where they're approved of by certain cultures. Uh, they're approved of by certain religions, by certain religious passages, by certain religious teachers. Um, like, any of the awful things in the world that you can think of have had the backing of religion or a culture or they just appealed to a person, okay? 
So this is, <laughs> this is morality with, with no ties. If it's just a matter of approval or disapproval, it's, it's, it's flying in the breeze. There's nothing tying it down. There's nothing saying like, hey, maybe we shouldn't do this. There's nothing like that, okay? So those theories, even though they sound good, even though people are attracted to them, when you really drill down, they're actually very scary theories because they're saying that anything could go as long as my culture approves of it or as long as God says, hey, uh, let's take out this group or something like that, okay? So I think we need to be really careful there. And let me say a couple more things specifically because, again, in my experience, uh, when you criticize divine command theory as I think it needs to be criticized, religious people could feel attacked. They could feel like, hey, well, you're saying that religion is, is bad or something like that. And that's, that's not the case at all. Okay? Uh, I would say that you know, religious people might be attracted to divine command theory, but saying that something is right or wrong because God said it wrong, that's the scary version. Okay? The better version is to say that something is right or wrong because of how God made the world. Um, God made people equal to each other. God made people autonomous. Um, and so that the, the, obli the, the moral obligations start there, and you can build a theory around that. And those are either you know, religious or at least compatible with, with religious belief. Okay? So divine, attacking divine command theory is not the same, same thing as attacking religion. Also, <laughs> attacking cultural relativism is not the same as disrespecting a culture. When I say that's a bad moral theory, I'm not disrespecting other cultures. Here's how it works, I think, in people's minds, maybe subconsciously, is that we have this fairly ugly tradition of ethnocentrism. Um, ethnocentrism, like pick apart the words ethnic and center, right? The, the idea is that my, whoever speaking at the time, my culture is the center, right? All other cultures are measured by their closeness or how far away they are to my culture. And I'm, I can judge other cultures by the standard of my culture. I agree, that is uh, not a great way to think about the, the diversity of the world. Uh, that is arrogant and, um, and gets us into trouble and, and uh, you know, if you take it seriously enough, it can spawn into like colonization and, and other kinds of things. Okay, so we, we do, in fact, want to get far away from ethnocentrism. We want to leave that behind. But a lot of people think, hey, if we're going to leave ethnocentrism, we've got to go all the way to cultural relativism. We've got to say, like, hey, every culture does things differently, and we have to respect that about other cultures. Two things about that. First of all, the, the difference is between cultures are oftentimes not related to the five fundamental values. Remember in this series, um, we are introducing uh, happiness and equality and autonomy and trust and virtue as the five really big fundamental values. That's what really drives ethical thinking. And oftentimes the differences are differences in like uh, how we eat, how we like welcome guests, how we get married. Those are like the differences. And yes, cultures are different in that sense, but it doesn't really touch Mostly it doesn't touch the five fundamental values. Now, what if it does touch the five fundamental values? Okay. Um, <laughs> so that doesn't mean that you have to say that culture is bad and terrible and I don't like it. What you have to do is say like, hey, this culture, maybe there's many good things about it, but it's not living up to ethics in this particular sense, right? So if a culture uh, condones uh, uh, violence against women, as there really are some cultures who do that in, in circum circumstances, they say, like, hey, violence against women is okay. What we should say, what ethical people should say is, like, hey, there are many good things about the culture, but in that particular sense, they are morally wrong. That is morally not okay. And I have a value to explain why that's not morally okay. A cultural relativist does not have a value. They just have this saying that, well, my culture says it's okay. They've said it's okay for hundreds of years, so I guess it's okay. It's not tied down by anything. And the last thing I'll mention is that oftentimes when we talk about these big differences, we're not saying that the culture doesn't have that value at all. What you mean is that they don't value it enough or in the right way. So let's take a typical statement that, uh, that shows up a lot in AI ethics, a statement such as uh, China doesn't value autonomy, right? They have the facial recognition, the surveillance state, and so they're not respecting people's autonomy. 
let's pick that, that phrase apart. Okay, so first of all, uh, I think it's intellectually lazy to say that China, right, because there's like 1.3 some billion people living there. And really, this is just a few government officials, just a few, a handful of people who think that this surveillance state is like the way we need to go. You can't just say that everyone believes it. That's, that's, that's going too far. Second of all, we shouldn't say they're not valuing autonomy. Like, they, of course they value autonomy. They, they let people walk down the street and like choose their own path and how to walk and what to buy at the store. I mean, th that, is a res th that is alone is a respect of autonomy. What we want to say is that they don't value autonomy enough. But they should value it more. And that's okay. Like, th th we can use values to criticize other people and other practices that don't live up to the, to the uh, standards of ethics. That's not disrespectful. That's just, th you're just being an ethical person, right? You're not being an ethnocentrist. You're not being a cultural relativist. You're using values to think through what other, what, what other people and other cultures do that is right or wrong. Sometimes I think about um, the, the cultural tradition, one of the cultural traditions that I identify with, um, the American experiment, which uh, uh, one of the most important founding documents of the American experiment was the Declaration of Independence, which says, all men are created equal. What should we make of that phrase? Well, um, I would say it's, it's, it was progressive. Um, I think it, most people uh, throughout history would either just never have thought about that or they would have thought about it and rejected it and said, no, people are not equal. So all men are created equal, I, I think, was progress, okay? But what, do we, what do, also do we know about that? Um, there were some very uh, horrible things implied by that statement because it was just uh, said, written in a room full of dudes from Europe, okay? Um, Maybe some of them in the back of their mind were kind of including people of color. Maybe some of them in the back of their mind were including women. But we know from the, the lives that these people led that they did not really. <laughs> um, so I really like that, that the American experiment started out with this, with this beautiful phrase, this statement of equality that wouldn't have occurred to most people in the history of the world. But in America, uh, there's been this very painful process, painful and yet extremely important, of expanding the circle of equality. It's like the founding fathers, quote unquote, valued equality, but they didn't value it enough. They didn't value it in the right way. And so now we're going through the painful process of, of saying like, okay, women are allowed to vote. Uh, you can't own people. Uh, there can't be laws that say that one color of skin does this, another color of skin does this. You can't be segregationist laws. And there are many other ways where that circle has expanded. So we are now valuing equality in a, in a more full sense. Okay. So again, when we say that this culture doesn't value X, they almost always do, but it's just that they don't value it enough. And it's okay to say, to use values to talk about here's why it's right or here's why it's wrong. That doesn't make you an ethnocentrist. That just makes you an ethicist. All right. Then we have this family, morality and power. Um, unlike uh, the approval family, I don't have nearly as much to say. There's not much I can criticize with it. Um, because if you go all the way with saying that morality is invention, I don't really know how you argue against that. Right? Someone who says that looks you in the face and says morality is not real. It's something that we invented as a power grab uh, to control other people. I would just ask you to look inside yourself. Uh, do you really think that the well-being of other people doesn't matter at all? Like it's just not something that we need to care about? Um, but look, if someone doubles down and goes all the way with one of these two theories, I, I, I really don't know what to tell them. Aside from the fact that uh, you probably should stop watching this video series because I don't know what you would get out of it. Like, why would you do AI ethics if you think ethics is just a game, a power grab? So here's what we've got in the end. We have two families that are about human well-being. Justice is about well, the well-being of other people. Prudence is about the well-being of myself. These are theories that will help us in our, in our project to understand ethics and the ethics of artificial intelligence. The family of moral theories that, that morality is about approval or about power, 
I think at best they're a distraction, and at worst they, they really get us into trouble because there, there just are no limits. There are no values that limit what is okay or not okay in those families. All right, so that leaves us with five theories. And this has been my attempt to uh, explain the difference between ethical theories that are productive and useful and will help us to actually think through problems ethically and theories that don't.